This is the story of the greatest betrayal in gaming history, Dutch Vanderlyn, father figure to Arthur Morgan. They've known each other for over 20 years, but their relationship is slipping due to one man's greed, ambition, and manipulation. Where are we gonna run to? Ah! They chased us from the west. They chased us over the mountains. They ran us into the sea. All right, sir. Do you have my bag? Always, Dutch. Arthur, let's get her in the water. Huh? Oh, no. Dutch Vanderlyn has been the leader of the Vanderlyn gang for decades, and he is a very charismatic leader. Okay, here we go. Along with charisma, he has a strong determination to make sure that his people are both safe and financially well. From the very beginning of the game, it is obvious that he cares quite a lot about his people. Sean, Mac, they might be okay. We don't know. But we lost some folks. Now, if I could throw myself in the ground, in their stead, I do it. Some of the key people in this gang include the most recent pickup, Micah Bell. John Marston, picked up early in his life by Dutch. Hosea Matthews, befriended by Vanderlyn while Hosea was trying to rob Dutch. Dutch liked him and they became friends and Hosea became his right hand man and counsel. It's important to note that most of the men in Dutch's gang came into his life by attempt to rob Dutch, but he saw potential in them. These are the kind of men that Dutch likes to have around, including Arthur Morgan. Dutch has always had a vision for the gang and formulates his plans around that vision. But you leave the planning to me. He's willing to take us to Australia or Tahiti. Where the hell is Tahiti? Who lives there? Tahitians, I guess. Dutch has the dream of the gang finding their own piece of land where they can govern themselves by their own rules, sustaining themselves and taking care of each other on their own. But this vision isn't always met with reality. Does this trolley go to Tahiti? Although his intentions for the game are success, and his many plans are the outcome of that vision, his closest men, Arthur and Hosea, are starting to wonder about Dutch from the beginning of the game. Though through his charisma and determination, Dutch overrules their advice. I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now, suddenly we're about to rob a train. What choice? Have we got Leviticus Cornwall's no joke, Dutch. And in this instance, Hosea was right. If Dutch took his advice to stick to the plan, the entire game might not have happened. We go and rob Cornwall's train. Although there were mistakes, the mission is a success. But it comes at a cost. It places a huge bounty on the heads of all of the gang members. Here we go! Here we go! It's also important to note that this isn't exactly Dutch's plan. This is Colm O'Driscoll's plan. Information that is easily glanced over, but this is actually one of the keys to obtain insight into the mind of Dutch Vanderlyn. Colm O'Driscoll isn't just any rival. He is the man who took Dutch Vanderlyn's wife's life, and in the process taking Dutch's only love away. Seems our friends have gone deaf. Wake him up a little! The story revolves around how the gang, but mainly Dutch, is fighting the change that is coming with the turn of the century. But beneath that, Dutch is fighting with the overarching changes of life, losing a loved one, maybe thinking about who he will lose next. I killed Combs' brother a long time ago. Then he killed a woman I loved dear. We parlay with Como Driscoll. This is an interesting encounter because it highlights Dutch's attitude in general towards conflict. They still believe in you? Better world. Pure world. Hmm? How's that coming along? Just fine. Mm. How's that score you stole off us? Which one? <laughs> they offered me a price, Dutch, to bring you in. Why didn't you take it? Well. Still might. I am sorry about your brother. Yeah, well, I never liked him much. I liked Annabelle. 
But things are slipping ever so slightly. Colm is Dutch's arch enemy, and when confronted with his own bounty, he asks Arthur the same question he asks Colm. When they want you, Dutch, they offered me my freedom in exchange they did. Why didn't you take it? <laughs> Arthur Morgan has a lot in common with Dutch. He's lost a loved one as well, but in another way. You can understand why these two get along so well and why the gang sticks together. Well, look at us! Three mariners! Ah, of course! Well, we three poor mariners to leak up from the sea. Dutch seems to be slipping a bit when we get into the story. He is thinking about himself a lot more than the gang, and pushing for more risky plans and outcomes. But the years prior are set in stone with the gang, and they are loyal to Dutch. If his life is threatened, they come to his aid. And if their life is threatened by being around him, they don't budge, and they push back. I don't want to kill all these folk, Dutch. Just you. In that case, it would be my honor to join you. Excuse me, friends. I have an appointment to keep with. I think your new friend should leave now, Dutch. Dutch's relationship to Arthur is a special one. Unlike John, he hasn't left the gang, ever. And unlike Hosea, he isn't just a friend, he is a father figure. Dutch calls Arthur his son throughout the game. And it's possible until now, Arthur has given counsel and advice at times, but he's never had to outright disagree and go against Dutch. I say Lenny, not Micah. Well, that depends if you want a massacre or a payday. You know, I wish that there was something I could do to make the two of you get along better. Well, that's easy. Make him change. Very funny. As everyone knows, Micah is the problem child of the gang. He is out for his own survival, and he has a knack for carnage and spilling blood. This combination with Dutch's new ways of desperation and determination is starting to go very, very wrong. But still, he has no sense to back down, going bigger and bigger with his plans. If Hosea was right about the train robbery not being a great idea, he is also right about opposing the St. Denis bank robbery. You want to leave this place? Leave this country? We need that money. Just don't feel good, Dutch. This is it. This is the last job that we are ever gonna pull. Before the year is out, we are gonna be harvesting mangoes in Tahiti. Oh. Trust me. Arthur. If it's business, well, business is business. We all know how the bank robbery goes, but we start to see different expressions on the members' faces when Dutch is still talking about the grand plan and loyalty to the gang. And there seems to be a different tone when he's talking about loyalty, like he suspects a rat. You could say that dark clouds are approaching the gang. And not only do we see straight through what Dutch has to say about loyalty, we also start to see the cruelty that the man has towards other human beings. Jesus, what part of your philosophy books cover feeding the fellow? The goddamn alligator, Dutch. The part that covers weakness. He might fool the characters with that line, but we know better. What part of weakness is this? Easy, Dutch. What was that? Horrible old crone. But you killed her. She was gonna betray us, Arthur. Couldn't you tell? No. Well, I got some Spanish. She was. You keep killing folk, Dutch. So how did you know she was gonna betray us? What'd she say? It was in her eyes, in the way she was leading us. But you said you knew Spanish. I know human beings, Arthur. Are you gonna strangle me next? No going back now. If Dutch suspects a rat within the gang, Arthur suspects Dutch is to be less trusted at the least. This is a major turning point in our adventures with Dutch. Do you have my bag? Always, Dutch. But there's more than your bag to worry about. We need more money. We've been on the run for months now. And I've seen you killing folk in cold blood like you always told me not to. And I'm sorry, but I can't help but think that if we There is country. In Roanoke Ridge, past Butcher Creek, I believe we could hold. Okay. You and Charles, you could take folks up that away. Micah and I need to do some reconnaissance. I need time and no traitors. 
The tension between these two is palpable. After all, this is the man who rescued Arthur from poverty and became a father figure. Arthur quite literally would jump off a cliff blindly if Dutch asked him to. But the way Dutch is leading the gang, or what's left of the gang at this point, he is acting more and more like Micah, basing his plans and his vision on survival rather than making solid choices for his people and doing what's best for them. We ain't so good at doing scores anymore, Dutch. Are you feeling all right, Arthur? What is going on, Dutch? What is happening to us? What's happening to you? And if Dutch's cruelty towards strangers and individuals is starting to be seen, his cruelty and abuse towards the Native Americans does not go unnoticed. He uses eagle flies asking for help as a way to meet the ends of his own goal. And at this point, it's safe to say that Dutch does not care about the gang or view the gang in the same way, even questioning Arthur in huge ways. Here lies the breaking point of our friendship. Oh, all right, Arthur. Who knows what other secrets I'll learn about? Who else? We catch up with Eagle Flies at the oil factory. Two men on a mission. Arthur to help and save Eagle Flies, and Dutch, well, Dutch has another plan. Hello, son. Hey. Saved your life. He did. Hey, you're quite the hero, Arthur, ain't you? Just a regular good guy. Same as always. What is it with you, Arthur? What is it? I don't get you. I don't get you no more. Oh, the doubting. The doubting. Come on, get him out of here! Now that Arthur has saved Eagle Flies, Dutch brings Arthur to help him out with his main goal for coming here, grabbing the money from the office and getting out of there. It's low, super low, even for Dutch, but at least we got the money now. On the way out, however, Arthur gets jumped and yells for Dutch's help. We got one! A white one! I need help! But Dutch just walks out Money in hand. I need help! Besides the main story with the gang, the moments with the Native Americans are some of the best examples of the theme. Redemption. Come on! We need to go. You. You ran away. Oh, I did no such thing. Don't be a fool. They could be back here any minute. We did it, gentlemen. Well, we got some money. And with the train job, well, we got a whole lot of money. Come on. Everything is coming together exactly as I planned. We take Eagle Flies back to his father and blow up the train bridge to create, as Dutch puts it, noise to distract Uncle Sam. But here it is revealed that the tide has indeed turned. Even though Arthur and John are technically still in the gang, they aren't mentally or emotionally. Questioning Dutch's plans, his loyalty, and whether or not they should be loyal to him. They even talk about where Dutch's money is hidden and how to steal it from him. Go. What about loyalty to, to everything? You've been loyal. I've been loyal. Look what that cost. You know all that ever mattered to me was loyalty. It's all I knew. It's all I ever believed in. Well, not anymore, John. Soon, you gotta go. Go. Don't look back. You need cash. You got a family. I need a vacation. And Dutch has all the money. Abigail thinks she might know where some of that money is. Well, you tell her she better make sure, and we'll find out just who and what we should be loyal to. After detonating the explosion, we go back to camp and find Dutch, who is paranoid about members like Uncle and Pearson leaving and calling them traitors. Meanwhile, Arthur is urging Dutch to let the women and the children go, but Dutch can't take his eyes off of his own plans. One more big score, we got enough money to leave. All this turmoil has the army and Pinkerton spinning, we take a boat and slip away. I don't know what you're saying, Dutch, but it seems like I've heard it all before. Just one more That's time. That's a goddamn train. Arthur! <coughs> this is different. We know this is full of cash. Army payroll. 
money and supplies to repair the bridge that you blew. This is all going to plan. It sounds wonderful. Hell, yeah. I ain't got much to lose, but... You know, the women and the children. And John and his family. I'm afraid I have to insist. I mean, we gotta let them go, because if the Pinkertons come through again, they will kill everyone. John? Insist? Yeah. Insist. Of course, pal. Whatever you think is best, I will see to it. Huh? Now, are we gonna rob a train? Sure. He insists upon it. He insists. I was broken by these last two missions, and now we have to help the man who has led us to ruin. We do rob the train right before it crashes, but the backstabbing has not stopped, and the worst is yet to come. We face grave news. Where's John? I tried. I tried. He didn't make it. That patrol killed him. We had to run. Come on, let's go before another patrol turns up. Not only do we get quote-unquote confirmation from Dutch that John is dead, we also find out that Abigail is kidnapped, leaving Jack to be an orphan. Something that Dutch not only allows, but doesn't bat an eye at. We go with Sadie and break out Abigail. Abigail saves Arthur's life, and we find out that Micah is the true rat, not Molly. At this point, Dutch has not only betrayed Arthur, he's betrayed the entire gang. Everything that it stood for, and everything that the gang had built up. And Arthur knows he has nothing to lose, so he goes back to confront Dutch and Micah. We all need to have a little chat. Black Lung, you're back. Hooray. <coughs> I just saw Agent Milton, Dutch. Abigail shot him. She's okay. Not that you care too much about that, you rats. All of you. Seems old Micah was pretty close with Milton. What the hell are you talking about, cowpoke? You talked. That's a goddamn lie. Dutch. Dutch. Think of the future. Milton told me. <laughs> and you believe him, Black Lung? You believe him? It all makes sense now. No. It damn well doesn't. Dutch. Think. Dutch. Be practical now. Dutch! John? You left me! You left me to die! My boy, I didn't have a choice. John, I didn't... You! I didn't have a choice. Left me! All of you, you pick your side now because this is over. Oh, them years, Dutch. For this snake. <laughs> oh, be quiet, cowpoke. Be quiet. You live in the clouds. No. You be quiet, Mr. Bell. And put down your gun. There's Pinkerton's coming. Fast. <laughs> now! <laughs> Who amongst you <laughs> is with me? <laughs> And who is betraying me? Bill, I'll be here. Think, think for yourself. <laughs> He's lying. And before we get to see the biggest shootout this side of the Rockies, we are interrupted by the Pinkertons. It seems that something has blessed us enough to have this moment open up and we escape with John, and Arthur distracts the men and lets John escape who goes into the epilogue, which I just did a huge video of. Arthur fights Micah, and before grabbing the weapon that could end the true rat of the gang, we are stopped by the man who led the gang to ruin. And in one moment, a moment too late, he realizes. Arthur, it's over. Oh, Dutch. He's a 
and right. You know it, and I know it. He's sick. He's dying. He's talking crazy. There! Up there on the ridge! I gave you all I had. I did. Uh. Uh. Come on. Dutch. Let's go, buddy. We made it. We won. Come on. John made it. He's the only one. The rest of us. No. But I tried. In the end, I did. Come on. Let's go. We can make it. Come on, Dutch. Come on. Come on.